Welcome back. Um, it's been a while. Sorry for that. Work's been hectic. Uh, but I thought I'd quickly run you through Anox, where we're at, and the design methodology behind the components chosen, as well as what the next steps are. So let's get into it. A lot of you might have seen uh, Aspire 1, and unfortunately, I haven't had the time yet to take it out to fly. The last opportunity I missed because I was away for work. There's a pseudo Jippo flight computer that was put in here. I'm still keen to test it, but I haven't gotten around to it. But in the meantime, I have been able to work on Anox, which is the official flight computer for the STEM rocket project. And over here, you can see the STEM rocket rocket project as to where it is right now, making some good progress. Touch, I'll touch more on that just now. If we look at the high level schematic overview as to the different memory block and then the sensor block. Now, this is a work in progress. Um, so take it with a pinch of salt, I still have to figure it out and there's probably some remnants to sort out still as well. So just be warned. Jumping into it, let's start with the MCU. We've got a microcontroller and the microcontroller of choice here is the SAM D21G, simply because it's widely used in Arduino platform and without too many pin changes, I should be able to upgrade this to the SAM D51 later on if I can actually find some. But for now, we'll stick to the SAM D21 um, 48 megahertz should be more than enough for what we need to do with this device. So that's the selection here. Below here is just some LEDs for human feedback. I've got a RGB LED over here, all the individual LEDs, and it depends on how much space I have left on the board, we'll decide which one I go with. But pretty straightforward, all the supporting circuitry and stuff around this microcontroller is just laid out. Next is the power supply. Over here, what I have is actually a little LiPo battery charger and what I intend to do is, is charge the battery inside the device so I don't have to take it apart. Um, since the rocket is a 40 millimeter tube I don't really have a lot of space to play around and mess around so the least I have to mess around in there the better and therefore through USB-C I can just charge the battery as it's installed in sudo. Then below here is a USB-C connector and a USB data line um, TVS just to protect from um, any surges or ESD. At the top here, we've got then the battery down to 3.3 volt step down regulator. And the reason why it's a step down switch mode regulator is simply to save power. This entire design is actually a 3.6 volt um, design. There's no 12 volts in anything like that. We do, do we do step up to five volts over here, but I'll explain that just now. And switch mode regulators is just a bit more um, energy efficient than LDOs. There's nothing wrong with LDOs, but if this thing's gonna sit on the pad for a couple of minutes or hours, um, I don't want it sitting there just draining battery for no reason at all. Then down here, we've got a three volt or whatever voltage comes in, step regulator buck boost to five volt. Um, and the reason for that is, I actually have four channel servo controller on here that I want to power from five volts and servos are supposed to be charged or are supposed to be powered and controlled from a five volt logic point of view. So that's what the step up, step up here is for. It can either take the battery or for all five volts in if you're testing on the bench and I can enable, enable or disable this from the MCU. And that's the reason for having this. Then below that, I just have a battery voltage monitoring circuit, voltage divider that gets switched on and off um, through two of the IOs. Over here is two voltage dividers for the 3.3 volt rail and the 5 volt rail, so I can actually monitor and record this data online or live um, in the MCU and uh, on memory. And then over here, just two LEDs to show when the two rails are switched on. Um, very important note here again in the effort of power saving, these are 1 milliamp um, 0603 LEDs, which is just nice because I know then I don't use more power than needed. I think normal LEDs is like 20 milliamps. So using the low power LEDs over here, I think they're from Osram, uh, just helps me in overall effort of power saving. Then moving on, let's go to the FRAM. FRAM is actually spelled without the, the E. Over here, we've got the SD card connector, micro SD card. I mean, two minds whether we need an SD card in this device, but for the sake of um, flexibility, whatever the user might decide to do, uh, I decided to add the micro SD card a holder because who knows what people want to do. The problem with SD cards generally is, is they corrupt like nothing um, and they're sensitive to physical damage when you have an unscheduled rapid disassembly 
or a very rapid unscheduled meeting with Earth. But what I'm more interested in is my solid state memory over here, which is known as FRAM. If you're not familiar with FRAM, it's just another variant um, like EPROM or Flash, except it is very high speed, very reliable, um, and doesn't get corrupted with file transfers because every single byte that gets transferred is basically finished. So it doesn't matter if it's busy writing while the device crashes, the likelihood of you losing anything is slim to none as well as the fact that they don't have or don't really have a read and write cycle anymore. So very nice device to, to have. Then over to the sensor suite. So what I have over here is a Invensys ICM 206002. Um, I'm contemplating putting an MPU 6050 on here. I know a source where I can actually get some of those chips. So I might put both on there just for redundancy. Right below that is the DPS-310, which is a very accurate um, barometer for altitude detection, obviously. Then on top here is the nice RF SX-1262 radio. Now, the reason why I'm using this radio is actually a LoRa radio. If you're not familiar with LoRa, I suggest you read up about it. It's a very long range radio um, modulation and uses very little power for the ranges you can get. Not extremely fast. But there's a reason why satellites um, actually deploy LoRaWAN radios now to communicate with base stations on Earth. And if you're familiar with the channel or familiar with the tiny GS community, um, you'll know what power is of these little radios. I mean, they're excellent for what they do. So I don't see no reason why we can't use them for rocketry because low power is what I'm going for and long range, who knows where this thing is going to end up. On top here is a YEC7 um, GPS receiver. It's the only GPS receiver that I know that is multi-constellation while only consuming about seven or eight uh, milliamps, which is crazy because, I mean, most of these GPSs actually use close to, I think, 27, 23 is the lowest I've seen in the U-Blocks range. Um, it's not terribly great. It, I think it's got a, a ceiling height of 50,000 meters, but for what I'm doing with the STEM project, that should be more than enough for what we need to do. Then over here, it's just a buzzer. Um, it's nice to have audible feedback inside your device to know which state it is in, whether it's armed, whether it's disarmed. And when you do rocket recovery, just having a beep every now and then might help you hear where the rocket is, has landed rather than trying to just find it visually. And then just a quick connector from SparkFun over here. Who knows what sensor you want to test in your platform. So having a bit of expandability in terms of the quick connect sensor allows you to buy any sensor off the shelf and do whatever you please. And then the one part that everybody's probably interested in is the pyro channel um, and pyro monitoring section. So I'll be the first to say there is probably a million ways of doing this. Um, this is just my way. I, it does everything I need to with a minimum component count as well as some safety factors built in. And so starting from the top, what I have here is at the very basic level is a connector for the igniter and what are we using here is the e-matches e they light up with three volts i think it's like 700 milliamps um, peak current for i think 50 milliseconds or something like that so just using a fit and straight from the vivo power supply it shouldn't be an issue to to trigger these i've tested them before um, if you've seen some of my other videos or the first video about the spire one um, you've seen that before and then what we have here is just a infet pulling to ground when we're ready to fire the pyrotechnic charge. But everything else on this side is monitoring. Obviously, one of the things you want to know in the field when deploying these things is whether you've got when <laughs> when you have a connection through your igniter. For some reason I'm having a tongue twister today. What this is is a comparator, and all the comparator does is it checks whether there's a connection through the igniter and switches on the LED as well as toggles a output high or low, um, depending on the state of the input. So we voltage divide by 50% from a top here. And anytime this line either goes high or below, we have a um, corresponding output on the other side. And the reason why this works is I've got a one meg resistor over here. And what that allows to do is some current to flow through the igniter through that one meg down to ground. And that's enough to actually trigger the comparator over here but 
is miles from where the igniter needs in terms of current to actually fire. So the chances of an accidental firing here is very slim. I can actually put two 1M or two, two, two M resistors in parallel over here. If one fails, then there's still another one. Um, there is a chance that these might fail closed circuit, but highly, highly unlikely. Normally they fail open circuit. And then just a choice here if I want to run five volts or, or three volts to the pyro channels themselves. Then scrolling down, I just have another one over here. So I've got two channels. I might put a third one on if I have the space, but we'll see when we get there. Then over here, and this is something that I see a lot of people actually leave out of their designs. And I'm not 100% sure why, because it's not very difficult to do, but it's just that extra level of security. This is a four channel um, Smith trigger. And the reason why I'm using it is to step up the logic level to the servos that we might use for active control surfaces or TVC mount. Um, so the signal comes in from the my MCU, which is three volts, and immediately converts it at a high rate of speed and um, sends the servo a five volt logic BWM signal. So it just makes sure that you're at the right level what the servo expects. Just a fuse over here for the servo channels, and this is the Berkman header for the uh, four channel servo header on the board which we'll see just now and that's pretty much it from a high level point of view um, if we switch to the actual layout of the pcb it's obviously not 100 percent done yet um, i'm still busy with this what you can see is is the two pyro channel connections i might be able to squeeze a third one in here or even a load switch for the video camera and the fpv um, setup that i want to eventually put in um, the stable rocket there's the dual comparator for monitoring whether I've got continuity um, in the devices. See, I got it. MCU, buzzer, um, DSP barometer, IMU, uh, quick connector, Smith trigger, battery charger, USB-C, RGB LED, and then over here is where the uh, discrete RGB or discrete LEDs will go. The reason why it's so empty right now is because obviously all the passives and stuff has not been added. If I added all the passives, it would have been a nightmare to show you um, all of that right now. But flipping the board over, there you can see the micro SD card. This is a Loran radio, and that is the GPS over there. And the reason why they're placed the way they are is because over here you can see the UFL connector that goes to the Loran radio. And here you can see the UFL that goes to the GPS. So they placed in such a way, the way I envisioned the, um, the flight computer sitting inside the body of the frame. So the connector sits towards the top where the dedicated designed antenna section will actually be deployed. And the reason why I'm mentioning that is, is it's probably my number one pet peeve. Every time I see somebody integrate a flight computer into a rocket as to what they do with the antennas. Um, and every single time they don't get performance or they get a failure in telemetry or anything like that, they often blame not enough power, the, the equipment is crap, blah, 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 blah. But if I see another antenna that's actually cable tied to a steel metal rod or hidden in carbon fiber or anything, and I hear from that person that, oh, this thing doesn't work. Yeah. So what I actually plan on doing is I'm going to make a dedicated video on the antenna system, the considerations you need to take when deploying an antenna, what type of antenna you need, both in the rocket itself, as well as on the ground, to get the best sort of omnidirectional signal as you can. Because, spoiler alert, this is not it. Um, if you think this is going to do what you need it to do, then you're wrong for a whole lot of reasons. And you're welcome to argue with me in the comments. but. There's far better antennas that actually probably cost less than that. If you just know a bit about soldering and, and wiring, you can do it yourself. Anyway, carrying on over here is the servo connector head. So I've got four servos. The reason for four is I might only need two for um, a TVC mount, but I've got four since I might want to play a bit with active control surfaces in a auto home um, function as part of a recovery system. And what's nice about this entire system is the way it is here is it's about 70 millimeters long by 30 millimeters wide. And the reason why it is like that is so it can fit inside the little cradle that fits inside the stem rocket, very similar to what you see over here um, on Anox. And the battery itself is actually a little battery from an FPV flight computer. Um, 
or flight system. And the reason why they are very nice batteries is because one, their form factor allows them to fit into a scale like this, but two, they have a very high C rating, which means they can dump a lot of power very quickly. And that's exactly what you need if you want to fire fire channels um, successfully. So that's what we'll use here. We'll jump into that a bit further later. But I wanted to give you guys the rundown as to where we're at with this right now. If you cannot wait for the next video to come out, please do consider that I have a Patreon page. I pretty much drop comments on the weekly, um, if not daily. As you can see, I've been making good progress with the 3D printing of the rocket as well as all the parts for it. I'm very excited about this. It's been a constant battle with things that you didn't think would be the most difficult part to do this. Um, so if you want to see updates, if you want to support the project, there is a Patreon page. So please do consider just having a view at that. Other than that, that's it for me right now. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Please give it a like, give it a share if you know anybody that is interested in this sort of stuff. I am doing this as an open source project, so all of these files and stuff will eventually be available. If you have any comments as to why I'm doing this, or if you have a better way of doing this, or if you have any questions, drop a comment below. Happy to help where I can. Until next time, cheers.